Session 87, Safari. George has been saving money for a long time in order to be able to afford a trip around the world. After scrimping and saving, living frugally and putting his social life on the back burner, he has managed to save enough to take a trip he had always dreamt of. As with every journey he has ever taken, the travel is when the holiday truly starts. Many people would be quite annoyed by the crowd of people etching their way through the airport terminal, screaming children, customers complaining, but George found the whole experience invigorating and exciting. In 15 hours, he will be in Botswana and on his way to his very first safari. The airplane's departure went off without a hitch and he was soon flying above the clouds and over ranges of mountains. On arriving in Botswana, he quickly became aware that there must have been somebody famous on the plane. A crowd of onlookers, a clique of photographers and a scoop of journalists were waiting expectantly in the terminal and George, though intrigued, had to push his way through the army of admirers and get to the hotel. Outside the terminal, a fleet of taxis and a welcome sun greeted George. He made his way to the head of the fleet and got into the taxi. Within no time he had reached the hotel, a majestic building with the biggest lobby he had ever seen, at its far end, a grand flight of stairs that veered off both left and right, opening up to a massive stained glass window. He checked in and was shown to his room. After having a shower, George exhausted from his chip, collapsed on the king-sized bed and drifted soundly to sleep. George arose early after a long, uninterrupted sleep, feeling refreshed and ready to start his day. After breakfast, he headed out to visit some of Botswana's collection of museums. His first visit was to the Botswana National Museum, a multidisciplinary institution that includes the National Art Gallery, Octagon Gallery and the National Botanical Garden. The displays of traditional Botswana crafts and paintings were beyond anything George could imagine. He treated himself to a print of some artwork from the museum shop. During his tour, he stopped off at a local eatery and tried a vet kook, a traditional South African fried dough bread filled with cooked mint beef and washed it down with some homemade ginger beer. He did, however, draw the line at trying some mashanga, otherwise known as the mopane worm, a grub that looks like a caterpillar and cooked in hot ashes, boiled or dried and fried. Whichever way they were cooked, it wasn't enough to entice George to try one. After a round trip visiting the museums in Molipoli, Mochu and Kanye, George eventually retired back to the hotel. Tomorrow he would be visiting the national park and his first safari. This is what he came here for. The excitement he felt almost made his attempts to fall asleep redundant, but tiredness soon won over and before he knew it, the rise of the morning sun gave him a welcoming wake-up call. After a quick shower and breakfast, George was ready for his particular part of his adventure. The safari tour bus was leaving at 8 in the morning and would take six hours to get to the national park, so he brought himself some vet kook and ginger beer for the journey. On arriving at the national park, he was taken aback by its natural beauty, the thick forests and lush green plains. He had no words to describe the first time he saw a herd of elephants basking and frolicking in the hot African sun. The pod of hippopotami grazing on the riverfront paid little attention to caravan of travellers through the home. Pride of lions, herds of wildebeest and buffalo and cutlers by hyenas fed George's imagination and the serenity of the ecosystem was disrupted only by swarms of flies, a small price to pay for such a tremendous experience. On his trip back from the park, George watched the sunset over the plains. The memory of this part of his adventure etched permanently into his brain. He had another four days in Botswana before heading to Australia. He had read so much about the bush, but he really wanted to experience it for himself. The wildlife, the aboriginals. He had never seen a kangaroo, not even at a zoo. Next week he would see a troop of them.